With Once Upon a Time in Hollywood coming out, my local cinema decided to do a screening of Pulp Fiction. And the question is, nearly 25 years later, does it hold up? Let's break that down. Hey guys, Jake Mello here again. And before we get into this, I love movies and entertainment. And so if you do as well, feel free to smash that subscribe button just down below. It'd be much appreciated. So, how fondly do you look on Pulp Fiction? For me, it's in my top three favorite films of all time. I'm eventually gonna get around to a list for that, but stay tuned. Coming out in 1994, there's a lot of movies that tell the main three stories of the film. The gangster taking out his boss's wife, the boxer throwing a fight, and two hitmen blowing some guy's head off. But what Quentin Tarantino did with these age-old stories is he added a fresh take on them. But as I said, does it hold up? I watched this film on the big screen for the first time, and I've actually never been to a screening where pretty much everybody's already seen the film. I pretty much only review new movies, so when I go to the movies, I'm generally going in with an audience that's never seen the film. So that in itself was a great experience as it was. And I've seen the film about 37 times, and I'm not exaggerating. If I was going to exaggerate, I'd say it, I've seen it a thousand times. But because of this, it's become more of a background movie for me. You know those movies you chuck on that you've seen heaps of times, you watch it in the background whilst you're cooking or cleaning, or just just doing other things because just having the dialogue in the background is enough for me to get excited but this time I was fully focused and to be honest it pretty much still holds up I love the dialogue and the characters and just the scenery Tarantino just creates his own unique worlds and so this came out as I said in 1994 and so there are differences obviously between 1994 and now and some of them do hold up excellently and on the other hand there's just some interesting things about the film that just wouldn't really add up today for example the use of the n-word holy shit wipe people saying it. Did you notice a sign in the front of my house that said dead nigger storage? I could not see this happening in films today. And I'm fine with it. Sorry, let me rephrase. I'm fine with it in the context of the movie. I'm cool with anything in a movie. If it fits the characters and the movie and the overall plot. So if Iron Man in one of the Avengers films was just to drop the n-word, I'd be like, whoa. Okay, because it doesn't fit with his character and the context of the film. You get it. Movies aren't real. And I think the other exception is Quentin Tarantino can still do it in his films, but I think it's because he's built up his certain style that he can still kind of get away with it. And just little things as well, like driving around being on your phone. At least in Australia, in this day and age, you could not get away with that. The fines are just crazy. But back in 1994, it was a new concept. And so yeah, they obviously didn't have any rules against that. So you could just drive around talking on your phone. And for someone of my age, that's just super weird to see. And that whole scene with Jules and Vincent when they're in the car, they're talking about the Royale with cheese. The Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. Well, when they're sitting in the car, they're talking about how he just got back from Amsterdam and how all the weed laws over there are crazy. You can smoke marijuana in this place and that place. And this movie obviously takes place in Los Angeles, California. And so it's interesting to watch because in this day and age, it's obviously all legal. And so that whole scene, if it came out today, just wouldn't make sense. You still can't get a beer at McDonald's though. But I think this film holds up for sure. Not only does it hold up, I still think it's something of a masterpiece. These days, it's hard to find a movie so popular, not widely received, but popular with movie goers and so entertaining for a movie that has little to no action and the overall spectacle of a blockbuster. blockbuster video. Wow, what a they don't exist either, but I mean this blockbuster. I know this movie didn't go gangbusters at the box office, but I think it's one of those movies that holds up to a large demographic. The film doesn't even have one establishing shot. There's no city skylines, no montages of driving before it cuts to characters. It's scene after scene after scene of interwoven character stories and character development and character interactions with a few twists and turns along the way to create tension. The adrenaline scene, Marvin getting his head blown off. Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. Butch running over Marcellus. <laughs> But as I said, these aren't really action scenes. They're more scenes to build tension and push the plot forward. It really focuses on this core group of characters, where in other movies, they'd really be caricatures of themselves. But in this movie and in the context of the film, they're real characters living their normal everyday lives. Granted, their days are messed up. But before this movie came out, you don't really see hard-hitting gangsters going out and getting breakfast together. Yeah, my bacon tastes good. Pork chops taste good. You don't really see the boxer after the match going back and getting his watch and making some pop Tarts. And Tarantino creates this almost perfect world where when you're watching the movie, you think these are just normal people that just so happen to be in this surreal world and this surreal experience. But you as the audience viewer can still relate to all the characters. And the way that the film's cut adds that extra layer of intrigue. Everything from the style to the mise-en-scene really adds that extra layer to that classic Hollywood lifestyle and that classic LA vibes, while still managing to put a fresh take on the film. So in my opinion, yeah, there's some things that wouldn't add up in today's world, but it's nothing that's going to ruin the 
the film or not make sense to modern audiences. So it's a resounding yes, it is gonna hold up. And I know when I have kids, I can't wait to be able to show them this movie. It might be a while because damn, that's a violent film. But one day. And so with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood coming out, I'm so excited to see Tarantino do a classic Tarantino film. Not that his other films are bad. I absolutely love Django, Inglorious Bastards, Kill Bill. But I'm excited for his classic films that take characters in the glitz and glamour of Los Angeles with that dark undertone and dark underworld that he was so good at doing. Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown. But what do you guys think? Have you seen Pulp Fiction? And if you have, what do you think? Does it hold up? Do you agree with me or think otherwise? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like before you leave. And if you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe down below, ring the bell, it'll be much appreciated. Thank you again so much for watching guys, and as always, work hard and be lucky. Hey.